Hi everybody, Miss Bueller here. This is part two of the Great Swamp Art Project and today I'm going to review great ways to add color to your drawing. So you should have already drawn your Great Swamp creature, anything from the pamphlet here or from the basket of models. And as you can see, I've selected my frog here. And I made sure that every line got traced with Sharpie. I could have used a color Sharpie or just black. And I've used the skinny Sharpie, the ultra thin, as well as the um, fine point for my thicker lines. So I'm just going to finish that up right here. And once everything is outlined in Sharpie, you can go right to color. We're going to be using Wax Resist for this project. So you've got your twistable crayons in your bin and I have a, an assortment of many other crayons if you can't find the color that you need. But let's start with just our twistable crayons. So I was looking at maybe this frog here for some examples of color and I see some yellow, some brown, some greens and I can just start using the crayons as I like wherever I would like to put them. And I'm going to remember to color in sort of a circular motion and press very firmly. And I don't want to forget that I'm going to be blending. So every single part of your picture should have a blended color. So I just put one color down first and then I can blend my next color on top. If I pressed too firmly with the first layer of color, it's going to be really hard to put another color on top. So if you just press sort of halfway pressure, you can then easily put another color on top and get a nice new beautiful color. Feel free to blend other colors with it to see what kind of other new colors you can make and you'll get some really great effects. One really big challenge I would like you to take today is to create your own brown. Now there is a brown crayon but for your color challenge today I'd like you to create your own brown by mixing complements. So magenta and green or red and green makes a great brown. Blue and orange are opposites or complementary colors. They make a great brown and so does yellow and violet. So let's give it a try. Let's say I want to make sort of a brownish lily pad. My two favorite complements to mix together are sort of magenta and green. So I'm going to take these two colors here and if I need to I might want to find like a reddish color and that can also make a great brown. So I'll try these two to get started. So just right up here I'm going to put a little bit of magenta down. Now that might not seem right because it's a lily pad and I kind of want a greenish lily pad. So I'm going to put my magenta first and then I'm going to go on top with green. This is a bluish green so it's looking a little bit too blue. So I'm going to switch to more of a bright green and I can see it's already starting to make a really beautiful brownish color. It might not seem it up close but when you step back from your art you'll see the brownish color start to appear. Okay. So another option would be yellow and violet. So let me try these two colors here. So I'm going to blend a little bit of violet on my lily pad. Go carefully between those toes and put some yellow on top. And that makes a really great brown. But I kind of want more of a greenish brown. So what should I add? Green. So I'm going to take that green from before. Color in little circles. And I can make a nice greenish brown right here. The last complementary set would be orange and blue. So I'm going to try it in this corner here. Now you don't have to try all three sets. If you want to, you can, but you really only need to show that you can make brown somewhere on your own. So blue and orange only, yellow and purple only, or green and red only. Completely up to you. So now I have this really great brownish color and I like that as a shadow so I might just leave it just like that. So I've blended my own brown. I've made my color challenge and now I just want to make sure I'm pressing really firmly with all my colors so that I can get some good wax resistance. Don't forget you can use white okay, for your secret shapes. So let's say I wanted to do some white ripples. I can easily see those once I start adding my watercolor on top. So you can use white for some um, ways to keep your colors lighter. You can blend white on top or you can create some secret shapes. So good luck today taking the color challenge. If you are a little bit afraid to try on your artwork first, there's extra paper in your bins and there's also the back of your paper. You could give it a shot. All right, good luck.
Thanks for listening.